Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our daily devotional discussion of the My Life in Him devotional book. We try to do this once a week or so to uh, both review and preview the daily devotionals in this book that we've been sharing all this week. And I'm Steve Lusk from the Red Bank Church of Christ in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And joining me today is our preaching minister, Tommy Stone. And we're here to share some thoughts with regard to this week's devotionals, which are uh, headed pray for one another. All this, uh, the last several weeks, we've been looking at some of the one another passages in the scripture. And uh, this week is no exception. We'll talk about praying for one another. Uh, There is one primary context that he uses um, this for this series of studies. And it's from Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 19. And this is week 24 of our devotional from uh, June the 14th through the 18th. And today is Wednesday, June 16th. So, Tommy, uh, this will be the the primary jumping off passage. So if you will, uh, just read this. Actually, this is uh, 14 through 21. And uh, we will go back and we'll review various things from this context uh, for our daily devotionals. So, Tommy, if you will, jump in there and read. All right. Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be able, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. In uh, Monday's devotional, he kind of introduces this passage and, and he, um, he challenges us to think about our prayer life. Uh, he asked us uh, what we're praying for. What, what are the things that are on our hearts and minds when we pray to God? And often, as he points out, those things have to do with some individual needs. Maybe it's physical help. Maybe it's a financial situation of someone in your family or someone you know about. Uh, maybe it's a job situation. Maybe it's a personal problem they might be having. We tend to pray for those things. And certainly we pray for blessings and gratitude and so forth. But uh, he, he asks a question here. Uh, how often do we pray for the church? Um, I would uh, I would just say that anytime we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in a, at least in the broadest sense possible, we are praying for the church. But I think he's talking about uh, the church universal, the local congregations, the work of the church, and so forth, uh, more specifically, because he says in, um, in many of the prayers that are recorded in the epistles, uh, they're praying for the spiritual health and well-being of the church. And, and certainly that is an appropriate thing for us to do. And, and that is praying for one another. Um, he highlights uh, four different areas, Tommy, that, uh, that Paul points out in this context. That sort of bec- becomes the outline for the remainder of the devotionals this week. Uh, he, he talks about uh, how Paul prayed for their strength. He talks about how he prayed that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith, that they would be rooted and grounded in love in third place, and fourth, that they would be filled with all the fullness of God. So that's kind of our our jumping off point, and that's what we're going to be doing today, with the emphasis being praying for the spiritual health of our church family. Um, So let's look at Tuesday's devotional where he challenges us to pray for strength. Uh, Tommy, I know you played football, and and usually football is a game where, among other skills, strength is an important uh, element. Uh, uh, What are some things that football players do to get stronger? Yeah, uh, well, they work on their their actual core strength with with weightlifting and all that sort of thing, Uh, and uh, he, he mentioned squatting here and I've, I've never seen anybody do 700 pounds of squat, yeah. but, uh, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty stout. Um, they, they work on their stamina 
uh, by, by, by running and working out in the heat and the elements and uh, to be able to apply strength over a, an entire period of a game uh, without flagging too much. So uh, that's part of it for sure. Uh, a part of what it means to, to, um, to get strong. Yeah. Of course, he's not really talking here about physical strength. <clears throat> no. And, and I, I like this because we typically, when we really want something, we typically are a whole lot more specific in our prayer life. It seems like if, if there's something we really want. Uh, and, and so he, he's mentioning some things here that we ought to be wanting for each other that we just don't, I guess that we just don't think about sometimes or that maybe you don't hear as many prayers being offered for um, that, that are really fundamentally important uh, and should really not be assumed. I shouldn't assume that. And I think that's what he does in today's in Tuesday's devotional is we shouldn't assume that everybody's coming from a place of strength. Uh, um, that we're all struggling with something. Right. And uh, so, so we need, we need that prayer. Yeah, the inner strength. We are all carrying burdens. I, I, uh, I appreciated. I know recently our women's ministry here at the Red Bank Church of Christ had a prayer breakfast, and uh, I saw the printout of the things that they did. and And one of the things that uh, that they walked through was um, imagine some burden. Uh, think about some burden that you're carrying, and then imagine Jesus physically, bodily walking alongside you and helping to lift or carry that burden. Uh, and, and that ought to give us inner strength. I like that picture. I like that mental image uh, of Jesus helping us to bear our burdens. And of course, one of the ways we sort of access or plug into that is for through prayer, uh, praying for that kind of inner strength that will help us bear our burdens. And the fact is, we never know what burdens people are bearing. Uh, I mean, it's often true that we don't. Uh, sometimes we do. But uh, it's often true that we don't know what inner struggles people might be having. Uh, I'm impressed with the fact that the Apostle Paul admitted that he had inner struggles. He said, there's, there's times when I want to do right, but I don't. And there's times when I do right and really don't want to. Uh, and, and so he admits that there's a struggle going on within him. And I think we probably all have those struggles uh, in, in regard to something in our life that we're carrying. So uh, that's a wonderful thing to pray for, praying for strength within us, the inner person, if you will, uh, to, to bear those burdens. Then the, the next thing he talks about was uh, Christ dwelling in our hearts. And he uses, a, he uses an illustration there about, uh, we like to have visitors in our home and, and uh, you know, whether it be family members that are coming from out of town or, or somebody coming over for a brief visit for a meal or whatever, uh, we like that. But when someone would have to move into our home and change our entire routine and our space challenge our space and all that that would make us a little bit more uncomfortable and that's the uh that's the picture that he paints of jesus dwelling in our hearts when jesus dwells within us then there are changes that are bound to take place right absolutely uh it's it's inevitable uh if if that's truly what's going on if we're if we're inviting him to 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 dwell in our hearts uh, then he takes up space. Uh, I, I've been challenged by this a little bit recently. Uh, we love our son and we love having him back from college for the summer, but him being home uh, changes things. It changes some of the ry normal rhythms that we've gotten into these days. Uh, when you add one more person, uh, it, it uh, tends to make a difference. Now we're perfectly willing to handle whatever comes our way to have him be with us, um, <clears throat> but it, it does it does create some things that you don't have to deal with. So uh, we just have to be willing to not only have that visitor, <laughs> but to make every uh, provision for and uh, be willing to make space for in every part of our lives, uh, Jesus to be there. Yeah, and obviously he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Uh, obviously, Jesus is not physically, bodily coming into your home, uh, but through faith, he fills your home. And if you think about how Christ being in your hearts and in your life and in your, in your dwelling, if you will, or dwelling within you, 
Uh, it will change the way you think. It will change your priorities, your values. Uh, it will certainly change the things you say, uh, the things you pursue. Uh, there's so many things that will change. And, and yes, sometimes those changes might be a little bit uncomfortable, uh, but they're always for the good. And uh, uh, I, I know that you guys are happy to have Charlie home for the summer. Uh, and, and you're more than willing to make room for him. Uh, and from his perspective, I'm sure he enjoys that and I'm sure he feels at home. And so we need to not only invite Christ into our hearts, into our lives to dwell with us, but, but we need to make him feel welcome there uh, and, and, and uh, uh, ask him to come into our hearts. And uh, that's, a, that's a challenging thing for us to think about as well. And if he does, then certainly a lot of things are going to change. And that's, that's Wednesday's devotional, the idea of Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith. Then Thursday's devotional is uh, this idea of a foundation uh, rooted and grounded in love. Uh, he uses a couple of illustrations. He talks about the roots of a tree, which is obviously uh, uh, the, the passage here refers specifically to roots, but also he talks about a foundation for a house and how important both of things, those things are to the health and well-being going forward to either a tree in the case of the roots or, or a house in the case of the foundation. Um, that's, a, that's a challenging thing for us to pray for as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, and, and it's, but it's so vital, it's so important. Uh, our, our foundation, uh, and, and obviously in the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus talks about foundation, uh, He's, he compares that to the things he's actually sharing with them uh, at that moment. Uh, those who, who hear these things and are willing to obey. Uh, um, so, so Jesus himself equates his teaching with that kind of foundational uh, thing. But, but then he goes on to talk about um, uh, Christ's love being rooted in, in the love of Christ. Right. Not just the teachings, but, but his his care and concern and demonstrated for us uh, certainly something that's um, strong, strong foundation. And I would submit that his teaching was founded in love as well, uh, because sure. ultimately his teaching wanted what was best for us, uh, the best way to live our lives. And, and maybe not necessarily always <clears throat> the easiest way, but certainly the best way for us to live our lives. And, and so everything about what Jesus came to do is rooted and grounded in love. So as his followers, uh, it follows that we should be rooted and grounded in that love, that love of Christ. And that, that love of Christ um, not only is willing to uh, humbly submit to his will, but it is to be demonstrated in our love for others uh, and the way we care for other people. Uh, and, and he points out that, you know, a tree is only as strong as its root system and if we're not rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, then we're not going to be very strong followers of his. We, we might be able to uh, go through the motions uh, of being a follower of his and, and maybe uh, in, a, in a sense be obedient to the letter of the law, but then miss out on the real importance of what everything is all about. Uh, so it, it's, it's important that we understand that idea of rooted and grounded. There's a couple things to note there to me. Um, the the root system of a tree can only be as healthy as the things that feed it. Uh, you know, if there's not good soil, nutritious soil, then that root system is not going to be able to draw up the nutrients from the soil into the tree to, to help it be healthy. And then also a water source or a, a source of uh, life-giving water for that tree. Um, and of course, the, the, I think the parallel would be in our lives, uh, if, if we're not rooted in these things that are manifested in the love of Christ, uh, the living water, the living bread, the, the living word, then uh, our tree, if you will, our spiritual lives are not going to be very healthy as well. So uh, I, I just love that analogy. It's, uh, it's so colorful, and it's one that we can easily understand. Um, and, and he says that that verse, verse 14, uh, rooted and grounded in love to comprehend with all the saints, 
the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. It's, uh, uh, it's beyond uh, the normal realm of understanding. Uh, it's, it is a spiritual thing. And that's why it's important that we, we are in each other's lives in the church, uh, Amen. demonstrating that love and through worship, through service, through fellowship, uh, and all these various areas in which we demonstrate and, and launch out from love uh, to love. So uh, that, that becomes a pretty important foundational idea. That's exactly right. And of course, we know, and I'll just say <clears throat> very quickly before we move on, uh, we know that when we do things motivated by love, it's not a burden, it's a blessing. It's a, uh, it's a pleasure for us to serve in those ways and to be connected with other people in those ways. Uh, when we do it out of obligation, it's a different deal altogether. Uh, and it's easy to give up and to quit and to, to have a bad attitude about those kinds of things. So rooted and grounded in love. I, I like that idea. And then the, the Friday devotional, uh, he says that we ought to pray for fullness. And he, he cites the last uh, two or three verses there from the, the last part of 19 through 21. Uh, his, his uh, opening illustration is interesting to me. He said, we'd like to have water in our house, but we want that water to stay in its right place. We want it to be in the tub or in the sink or in the washing machine or <laughs> in the shower. Uh, we, we don't want it running out over the bathroom or down in the basement or whatever. Uh, we want that to stay in the right place. But here, Paul says that he wants... Uh, the, the goodness of God to be overflowing the fullness of God. Uh, interesting analogy, interesting parallel there. Yeah, it's a great image. Uh, if if, if, if uh, we take God to be of great benefit and, and importance in our lives, then we don't just want a little bit of that. We want, right. we want to be full of it. We want it to spill out over onto everything else that we do. So similar to what he said earlier about Jesus being the guest in your home, uh, we, we want, we want um, him taking a presence in our heart through faith, uh, that to empty out into every, every part of our lives. Yeah, to, sure. per, to permeate our, our whole lives. And then he kind of gives the, the, the reason for that or, or the, the motive behind that, if you will, the power behind that, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, because he says to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or even think, that power is working within us. Uh, and, and I think the, the point there is that God can do far more through us than we, than we ever consider. Uh, I think about, well, what can I do? I, I'm just a drop in the bucket, uh, using the water analogy again, uh, of, of all that needs to be done in the world. And yet through us, God can do so much more than we even can imagine uh, because of his power. And if, if we acknowledge that, if we think about it in terms of our own power, then yes, we are going to clearly fall short. We think about it in terms of his power uh, filling us full, then that can overflow to do good far more than we can imagine. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful image to think about. Um, so, so Paul prayed for their strength, he prayed for their hearts, he prayed for their love, and he prayed for the, the, the fullness of God in their lives uh, to do not only what God asked, but to do so much more. Uh, uh, that's, that's an amazing thing, and, and that's certainly the idea of praying for one another, uh, the church in general, but yes, each of us individually. And so uh, that's, a, that's a beautiful little outline there of things for which we can pray. And of course, there's so many more things for which we can pray. We, we love to pray for you. We love to pray with you. Uh, we uh, certainly like to honor your prayer requests. If it be about a health matter or a, any other kind of issue in your life, we're, we're glad to do that. Uh, you can contact us here at the Red Bank Church of Christ uh, through by means of phone or email or maybe the best way is through our website. We have a link there where you can make a prayer request and you can even do that anonymously. And we love to answer those prayer requests and fulfill them and, and go to our heavenly father and pour out those petitions before him. Uh, we, we believe in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer and everything that we do as followers of Jesus ought to be bathed in prayer. Uh, and so prayer is not just a ritual 
that we perform in a worship assembly or before a meal time or whatever. It's a, it's a part of our lives. And uh, so we encourage you and challenge you to keep on praying. And, and that keeps our hearts and minds close to, uh, to God. Uh, Tommy, I'm going to ask, if you will, as we kind of wrap this thing up, to, uh, to lead us in prayer. And, uh, right. and again, we'll be glad to pray for you uh, any way that you need us to. Let's pray. Our Father, we're so thankful for all you have done and do for us in the physical. But as we've been reminded today, we ought to be praying for uh, one another, uh, according to your word, um, to, uh, to allow you to take up more residence in our lives, for you to overflow to those who are around us, for us to have a strong foundation in, in, the, in the love you have for us. Uh, Father, to draw strength from it um, as we share burdens with one another. Father, those things are so very important. Help us to be that involved in each other's lives that, um, that we both know what to pray for and that we are comfortable enough to let people know uh, where, we're, where we're needing that kind of strength. Father, uh, help us to uh, draw closer to one another as we, um, as we do that. Father, I pray for people today who might be listening uh, to our class today or our devotional thoughts today that uh, is struggling uh, in, in various ways uh, that might not just be physical. And, and we ask that you suit them what they need and that, uh, uh, that you be there for them in, in ways that, that uh, maybe we, we can't. And so we we pray that you do this uh, through the power that raised Jesus from the dead. and him we pray today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tommy. And thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray you have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the week. And we invite you to come and visit with us anytime you have the opportunity. We're, we're open for worship on Sunday, and we, we love to have visitors. So uh, come and see us. And in the meantime, take care and God bless.